We bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Once again, you are welcome in Jesus' name. Yesterday, uh, Monday, we talked about faith. And yesterday, we talked about hindrances to faith. Hindrances to genuine faith. Hindrances to genuine faith. And we couldn't round up yesterday. So today, we want to continue from where we stopped yesterday. Uh, yesterday, we said that many things are actually affecting our Christian faith. And some of those things, uh, the number one I mentioned is religious deception, that people are being deceived to believe lies, that even in Christianity, we have a lot of people who are in to destroy Christianity, and not because they are in, uh, as a result of the call of God that they receive, that they are in to cause trouble and to bring confusion to the body of Christ and also confuse those who are not Christians so that they will never make up their minds to become Christians at all. Then also, uh, we also talked about lawlessness and the falling away. There will be lawlessness in the land as uh, we have been warned before that because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall was good. That is Matthew 24, verse 12. And also in uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3, we are told that uh, for that day shall not come a set, there come a falling away first, and that man of Sin be revealed, the son of perdition, that um, there shall be a falling away, uh, a lot of deception shall be in, on ground. And we also talk about trials and hardship, some of the things that pose themselves as hindrances to our Christian faith. Then today we want to talk about scoffers, scoffers. These are those who make jests of the truth. Scoffers. Um, the, some of the things we see in the end time, that's what we want to look at today. Second Peter chapter 3, 3 to 6. Peter 3, 2 Peter, 2 Peter 3, 3 to 6. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For these they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby are the word that then was being overflowed, being overflowed with water, perished. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ rightly tells us that the scoffers are going to come, people who make mockery of Christianity. I remember the days of Noah, when Noah was actually building. Uh, it was a uh, something that was not very palatable to Noah uh, because of the stress. He was building an ark that was far, far, many times larger than his house where he was staying. Uh, in those days, people used to live in tent. They were not used to building skyscrapers and the kind of uh, buildings that we have today. 
that one day people woke up and saw that Noah was gathering woods. He was making, making preparations. Noah, what are you doing? And Noah said, I am building an ark. Ark for what? What is an ark? Said it's a form of sheep. You are building a boat on the dry ground. How? Is your wife aware? Yes. Is your family aware? Yes. What have they done about it? Are they aware that something has gone wrong with your brain? How can somebody be building an ark on a dry ground like this? No, this is unbelievable. But Noah was preaching to them and telling them, you see this world? God is coming with his anger to destroy this world. I want to ask a very simple question. Do you think that the people in the time of Noah were encouraging him? No, they were not encouraging him. Uh, there is this story of uh, people going there to a street, to pool. Uh, it's not in our Bible, but uh, some extra biblical record, which I don't believe. This is what I believe. It says that uh, people used to go there to pool until someone fell on his pool and his sickness vanished. So people decide, ah, where did you get him? We should say, no, I went to uh, mess up the ark of Noah. And as I fell, uh, I discovered that I've become him. See, that same place where we go, okay, now let's go and use our body to rub all the mess. That they went there and use their bodies to rub the mess. Well, that is not Bible anyway. But the truth is that people discourage Noah. So many people discourage him. I believe it took a while before he also convinced his family. They were not the one that heard from God. It was Noah who heard from God. Scoffers came and mocked him, mocked his family. Even after building the ark, it was time for him to bring the animals inside. Did you ever hear that anybody heard him? God brought the animals by his spirit, the animals were led to Noah, including those animals that used to hide. They all came. And Noah, out of his obedience, took snake along too. Serpent. Both serpent said the eye. People were laughing at him. Scoffers. The same way they laugh at some of us today. Here is your God. Charlie, when we go to the village, people try to discourage us. You no longer do our normal uh, festival, Juju festival, because uh, you believe that you are not a Christian, so all of us have become evil people. Lots of discouragement. Scoffers mocking. Especially here in Africa, a lot of people are so much concerned about the issues of others and not their issues. They are concerned. Today we have WhatsApp, and WhatsApp is one of the things people used to do. Have you heard? Have you heard? Have you heard? Have you heard? That people now pass wrong information about other people. Concern themselves about the issues of others. That people can wake up in the morning and start talking about people. Instead of planning their own lives. Start talking about their neighbors, those who don't have children, those uh, who are not married, those who are graduate but have no job. And they say they are going to church. And their church has not been able to produce a job for them. And we hear some of these things. Was it not last year, last two years, a woman came here to give testimony that uh, someone was looking for her and then the daughter was passing by 
So the stranger asked a kind of neighbor, somebody in the neighborhood, and uh, says, uh, uh, try to describe the woman. Do you know so does it? And uh, the neighbor said, is it that woman that has only girls that are not married? Do you remember the testimony? Yes. It's about the counter. <laughs> and the woman heard it. Look at the names people are giving to me. That woman that has only girls that are not married. That go. Look at the description. Are children not blessings from God? When Christians we hear these things, people mock us. Especially our genuine faith, people mock us. In this our generation, if you want to live for Christ, people will mock you. Even me. Do you know that some people mock me? <laughs> some people mock me even to my face. One told me, he said, Hosanna, uh, do you know that uh, by now you should have been rich? But because of the way you preach, people thought they can't even give you money because you offend people. Why don't you balance this thing somehow? <laughs> so he's talking to the son of the person that owns all the millions in the banks in the world. Is God not the owner of all the money in the banks of this world? That is my understanding. That what I don't have now is what I don't need. Because my God loves me and He provides all my needs. People mock of our Christian faith. Especially when we do something and say, I'm a Christian, I believe Jesus will come soon. I don't need to misbehave. I don't need to sell my right. I don't need to sell my conscience. I don't need to mess up my life. People mock us. And these mockers are hindrances to our genuine faith. You may be having one challenge or the other. And people are asking you, where is your faith? Anytime people ask you this question, remember Job. And I tell, I say this a lot of times when I'm preaching, when I'm talking to people, I tell them, sometimes the problems, the challenges, the trials and temptations of some people could be as a result of the discussion between Satan and God. Maybe meeting somewhere, as it happened in Job chapter 1 and chapter 2, Satan does strolling around, and then God says, Satan, what are you doing? He said, since you drove me from heaven, you know, you didn't give me any house, I've just been roaming to and fro, and the earth, nothing more, Lord. And God said, since you've been moving to and fro, have you even considered my servant? Who? Maybe there was a discussion like that. Satan said, all men have failed God. God, all men have failed you. And then God says, have you considered my servant, Elizabeth? Have you considered my servant, Hosanna? Have you considered my servant, my faithful servant, John? And that he is faithful, even if Every Nigerian turns against me. Even every American, even if every uh, uh, American turns their back against me, he will never fail me. Have you considered my servant? Do you know that many things will pass through? Will be as a result of a discussion like this. You know that. Who has ever seen a baby of like three years that is mad? Mad. Have you seen? Don't they have enemies? They have enemies. Not the enemies they make for themselves, but their parents will make some enemies for them. Eh? Their star 
could make an enemy for them, just as the star of Jesus produced an enemy, and many lives of babies were lost. Their star could appear. An enemy could see them, and with evil eyes see that these children will be great tomorrow. Automatically, they have enemies. They fight against them, but they can't afflict them with some level of affliction, except they take permission. If they are not granted permission, it will never come to pass. Why? Because they are innocent. At that age, God, wherever they are, irrespective of the religion of their parents, God is in charge of their lives. Until they grow up to the state, to the age of accountability and start doing evil or choose to do good. That is when they we then push God aside. Even though they are small, they are young, they can't pray, they can't resist, God is there for them to protect them. There is a law, invisible law, that these people must not be touched anyhow. That is how it is. For Satan to touch a child of God, he must obtain permission. Without that permission, no way, because on the forehead of that child of God, it is written boldly, don't touch, don't touch. The Bible says that for the foundation of the law, standard sure, having this seal, there is a seal, there is a seal. Once we depart from evil, love the Lord with our heart, we are busy about his work, we will be busy protecting us. What am I trying to say? Some of the things we face may come as a result of permission. And just imagine if God tells you that you will face trials, but I will be with you. Even when you pass through the waters, when you pass through the water, the, the fire, I'm going to be with you. It will not burn you. You will be inside. People will see that you are burning out from outside, but you are not going to be consumed. But when you overcome, I'm going to do this for you, I'm going to do that for you. How many of us will give up? How many of us will give up? When you know you are aware. The time of Job, Job was not aware that there was a discussion on his behalf. But this time around, if you are aware, will you fail God? But today, same thing, Jesus told us that we shall face persecution, we shall face trials, scoffers, mockers, they shall come. But we should be faithful to the end, and he will give us the crown of life. As a matter of fact, it is not good, it is like a double calamity for a Nigeria to go to hell. So no matter what we face, we should endure. As a brother, I tell every time, tell him every time, brother, this world looks like your hell. Don't go to another hell. Tell him every time, this world looks like your hair. And then we say, it is hell for me. Don't commit suicide. Don't kill yourself. I tell him every time, don't try it. So that we can have heaven to live here. We cannot leave hell to another hell. And I tell him, please endure. Endure. This problem, enjoy it. Praise the Lord. Scoffers shall come. Today, many people have modified Christianity. 
They want to serve God the way they want, and not the way God says, serve me like this. I listened to one pastor, I think this year, last month, and he was talking about that Jesus is not going to come again, that the rapture has taken place. It's not coming. And he was bringing his points upon this same Bible. That Jesus says, Behold, I come quickly. Confusing people. And these people will mock you. If you are making preparations, they are going to mock your faith. So many trials before us. But how many of us? are living our lives and not considering what people are saying. I say this every time, my life is my life. Your life is your life. When God was sending me into this world, He didn't show me anybody that, Zana, this person is your mate. Make sure this person does not cap you in life. Make sure he does not overtake you. Were you giving anybody like that? Life is power. Life is my head. My head. So why should I begin to kill myself? I will do my best and leave the rest for who? Leave the rest for God. Scoffers will definitely mock you. You see now, I am a bit tall and I am slim. Eh? You know I'm enjoying my body size today. I'm enjoying it. But today is supposed to mock me that I'm too slim, that you have some flesh. Mm -hmm. But when I was younger, when I was a child, you could count the number of ribs that I have. Yeah, because I was so slim. It's not that I was not eating food, it's to eat a lot. In fact, mostly carbohydrates. But I was never fat, and people used to mock me. There are some of us here, maybe sitting down here. The food you like best, you don't eat it because of what people are saying. Decide to change the way you live your life. It's not because it's against your health, but you. Majority of people are not satisfied with their beauty. Including me, some time ago, used to be ashamed of myself. But I have to come to understand one day that I should be proud of myself. Do you know how many hours God spent in creating you? Do you know how many hours? For God to cause Adam to sleep. Do you know how many hours Adam slept before God produced Eve? Now, if we wake up and say, I'm not beautiful enough. Not because your spirit tells you or your God tells you you are not beautiful enough, but because you are looking at models on Instagram and Facebook. The same people who produce makeup will now edit pictures, edit videos, and tell you that this is how you're supposed to look. And all your life, you want to be like those people. Instead of living your life. Some of us in way we live our lives. We live our lives in adjustment to what people are saying about us. Instead of living our lives because it's the best way for us to live, we concern ourselves about what mockers are saying. Uh, I have chosen to be dressing like this. You wear tie, wear this uh, coat, wear suit, wear ordinary materials. No jeans, no chinos. Uh, really, I wear native because I chose to dress like this. But you know, some people say I dress like an old man. My tailor, my tailor should be here. When he sews my trousers and they are too, uh, too tight, I tell him to go back. 
when it's going, taking my materials, I tell him, if you sew tight trousers and bring it to me, you will wear it, not me. Choose your ways yourself, not people controlling you and how you should live your life and how you should not live your life. Follow your God, follow your Bible. So of us, it is we wear, we are not comfortable with them. But because somebody is telling us that we will soon lose our husbands, we are changing. Even in church today, somebody could say they love you, and they will come and tell you that, sister, I love you, that is why I want to give you this advice. Your skirt is too focused. No man will come and meet you. Because of this, your size of your skirt, uh, bring it up a bit. Make it tighter. When you have chosen your path. The truth is that uh, we attract different things. Now let me tell you something. You see this mama here? Mama na you know the point. You see this mama here? Eh? She has one daughter who, is, who got married last year. Sorry that I'm saying. But I have to say it. I asked the daughter one day. Do boys, men, call you? The way they call, I want to take you out. She said, no. People who approach her for marriage. An example, her name is Kobiru. People who approach her, they approach her for marriage. Why? Because of the way, when you see her, you see wife material inside of her. Her granddaughter, she is married to a Baptist reverend. She got married here last year. She was in her choir. So uh, you attract your like. When some people see you, those who are looking for to pass a night with a prostitute, when they see you and you don't look like a prostitute, they will not come to you. That's the truth. They will come to you. So when somebody begins to advise you that don't do it this way. Forget about Bible. Then you should know that if somebody is telling you to forget about your map, your map, and you don't know the road, you don't know the way, and somebody is telling you, forget about your map, then the person is telling you to get lost. How many of us? are listening to what people are saying and it is affecting your faith. When people come to tell you, this is what they are saying about you, look at your life. If nothing is wrong, move on. Because there are distractions everywhere. This affecting our faith. Some of us have so modified our lives. We listen to people. We modify our lives, modify our lives to the extent that we have started attracting different kind of temptations, different kind of evil, different kind of trials into our lives. Why? Because we fail to live by the truth. Can I tell you something that police don't stop me on the way. They hardly search me. I think they have searched me only once, and it was, I think this December, this past December, because I was even carrying a bag. It was my bag, they asked me to open it. They don't search me. Even when they search people, they don't search me. Why? Because I don't look like a criminal. They don't search me. But there are some of us who modify our lives according to the, the uh, trend. What is on board? And because of that, listening to scoffers, we have started attracting different kinds of temptations, different kinds of evil to our lives. How many of us will make up our minds to be focused? The truth is that many Christians are not even ready for Jesus to come back. They're not ready. 
Many people don't even have that mentality. Their faith is shaking because of you are saying about them. You have no job, fine. Pray. Believe in God and look for something to it before a good a better job will come. Look for something to it. Don't listen to scoffers. I, be, I was a farmer. Even before I turned 18 years, I was already a farmer. First my life. There was a time I resolved I don't want to have any friend. Let me face my life. At 17 years old, I was not in secondary school yet. Will you believe? Eh? <laughs> I not started GSS1, junior secondary school, class one. I had not resumed 17. I was doing farm work so that raise some money, go to school. You know the abuses I have faced. There are some of those who abused me. Yesterday, some of them cannot abuse me today. Focus on your life and forget about what people are saying. It is the way you eat your food that will show that you are enjoying the meal. You could be eating. Something that is delicious, but because you are not happy, people will think it's sour food, that the food is not sweet, it's not delicious. But they say, when you eat it, even you are soaking garlic and you are soaking it with joy, with style. Somebody will be passing by and say, Brothers, you they enjoy you. <laughs> you are soaking garlic. But because of the joy with which you are, there was a sister in this church who. Snapped, she was soaking garden with uh, 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 what is it? Uh, granite. She posted it on her WhatsApp uh, status. So when I saw it, I had to comment. I said, ah, What is this? That he said, Actually, it is what I ate today. I told her, You mean she's in school? You ate this food today? He said, Yes. Yeah. I said, Please send me back. <laughs> I have to send her money. She said, well, I have no food. So uh, this is what I have. And I have to post it. She's proud of what she is. I'm not saying you should be posting your poor meat anyway. But she has her own reason. And even that reason attracted something good to her. That was when I knew that this person is having financial challenge. But do you know that same thing can lead some people to give up on God? Even what are people going to say about me? See me that I'm soaking Gary. What are they going to say about me? Some of us are not happy with our children. Some of us are not happy with our husbands. After coming from the altar, all that I have, I share with you. All that I have, I give it to you. I give to you. We did the love of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For better, for worse. Now, the worst has come. You say, no, you don't take it. Again. The worst has come, and you are saying, no, I'm out. And look at some of those rich men who told you that they never had uh, downtimes. Many of them had challenges. But see, just believing in God, trusting what God can do. God will lift them up the way he lifted them up. And the Bible says that among those in the east, in the time of Job, there was no woman, no lady that was as beautiful as the daughters of Job. God bless him, restore him again. So if you move out of your marriage because a man is not doing well now, when God has restored him, will you go back? Yeah. Eh? So don't even try to move out. That is the truth. And even when you are inside, respect him. Forget about what people are saying. The fact that uh, he had accident and part of his face now squeezed does not mean that 
it's not your husband again. That's the truth. It should have been you. Be on your faith. Let's pray. I just feel like encouraging someone this morning that we should not listen to people. Don't listen to scoffers. Lift up your hands to God. Lift up your life to Him. Tell Him to take control over your life. Give you the spirit not to give up. The spirit to remain focused on Him. Not to listen to what people are saying. There are busy bodies everywhere. Even as we await the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have to be careful on about who we listen to, what we listen to, what we give our attention to. If you have any burden in your heart, just lift it up to God. Ask the Lord to take control over your life. Ask Him to take control. Don't allow whatsoever thing you are passing through to drown you. Don't allow what people are saying about you to make you change from good to bad. Run up your prayer. The Lord our King, we give you praise, we worship you. We know that you will come again and that your coming is very, very near. We therefore ask that you will help us so that we will not give up on our Christian faith in the name of Jesus. May your spirit and your power uphold us. May your glory radiate over our lives. Lord, I pray for as many that are giving up, as many who have given up, as many who are contemplating giving up, that Lord strengthen their faith in the name of Jesus. Those who are standing, Lord, we pray that they will never fall in the name of Jesus. Arise, O oh Lord, and fight the battles of the children for them. May the God of heaven and earth, the one you trust, show up in your life in the name of Jesus. Thank you for asking our prayer, Lord. Jesus, my name, we pray. Shout hallelujah. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website, www.hosannadavid.com. Email us at info at hosannadavid.com. God bless you.